Strange things can be found at the bottom of every canal. People accidentally drop objects from their boat or consciously throw things into the water. But what this dredging company found when they drained this canal after 15 years is truly unimaginable. I've never experienced something like this in my life, one of the dredgers said. Curious about what they found? Then don't hesitate and keep watching. For the men of the dredging company, the day began like any other. They had to drain a canal and then they would clean it up. Because they'd already done this hundreds of times before, they knew they might find strange things. People would dump the most bizarre things into the water. I even found dentures once, one of the dredgers laughed. But none of the men were prepared for the object they would find that day in the drain canal. This is too crazy even for me, one of them said. The group started quietly that morning. There was only a small layer of water left in the canal, so there wasn't a lot of draining work left to be done. It seemed like it would be a routine job, but none of the men could have predicted that this job would end so bizarrely. Still sleepy, the men watched as the last of the water was drained out of the canal. The canal was drained and now the real work could begin. They climbed down carefully and started cleaning it. What a mess! There were tons of rusty bikes, empty bottles, and half-decayed garments under the mud. But then one of the men suddenly stumbled upon something very peculiar. There was a wheel sticking out above the thick layer of mud. The dredger pulled on it in order to have a closer look, but once he had managed to pull the object out of the mud, he was shocked by what he found. He called one of his colleagues and said, I didn't know what I was seeing. There in the mud, there was an old pram. The state of the pram indicated it had been lying at the bottom of the canal for years, but there was still baby clothes and toys in the pram. Could there be a little baby here at the bottom of the canal? After hours of searching, they found no trace of the child who had once been in the pram. But what could have happened? Why would someone just throw away something like this? What the dredgers didn't know then is that there was a very special story behind this abandoned pram. The two dredgers examined the pram carefully. They looked under the cushions and in the baby carrier. Maybe they could find something to find out the identity of the previous owner, but of course there was little chance of this. The pram seemed to have been in the canal for years, but then one of the dredgers noticed something. He discovered a small label soon to the side of the stroller. There was something on it that might bring them one step closer to the previous owner. Quickly, they rinsed off the label, and indeed, the label had a name and address written on it. I know this address. I walk past it every day on my way home, said one of them. The two men decided to go straight to the address on the label after work, but once there, they would be in for an unpleasant surprise. When their shift was over, dredgers Tim and Bob decided to take the pram to the address that was on the label. It wasn't far from the canal, so they could easily walk there. When they rang the bell, a feeling of excitement came over them. Never before they found a pram in a canal. There had to be a special story behind it, they were sure of it. When the door opened slowly, creaking, a woman's face appeared in the opening. What do you want? the woman asked. When the dredgers asked her if she was the woman from the label, her eyes grew big. The woman was clearly frightened by this question. No, I'm not, and I don't have anything to do with that woman either, the woman said angrily before she slammed the door in their faces. Astonished and confused by this hostile reaction, the men took off. But the pram continued to dominate their minds, neither of them sleeping that night. They therefore decided to start a follow-up investigation the next day. They asked around the neighborhood if there was anyone who knew the woman on the label, but hours passed and no one seemed to have heard of this mysterious woman. Until suddenly, they were talked to by a homeless person who sat along the street begging for change. I know who you're talking about, started the homeless man. I'll tell you for a small fee, he continued with a grin on his almost toothless face. The two dredgers looked at him in doubt. He looked like he'd do anything for some money, but since he was the only one who gave them any clue about the woman, he decided to go along with it. Tim took a tenner out of his pocket and gave it to the homeless man, and he told the couple exactly what he wanted to hear. The woman who slammed the door in their faces was her cousin. She and her aunt hated each other after what had happened to the poor woman. Her aunt couldn't do anything about it, yet it drove her entire family away. What couldn't she do anything about? Why did she chase her family away? The most important information was yet to come, for the man knew exactly who her aunt was and also where the men could find her. A tenor well spent, for it took them exactly to the poor woman's whereabouts, and what they found there was heroin. The woman on the label didn't have a new address, she lived on the streets these days. The men were so shocked by this information that they doubted whether they still wanted to hear the story behind the pram. After all, what could have happened to a young mother to suddenly end up on the street? Was she begging for her survival? 
No matter how painful this story would be, Tim and Bomb decided to visit the woman anyway. Maybe they could do something for her. Once they arrived to the place where the woman was staying, they found a small hut made out of garbage. It didn't have a door, so Tim decided to look inside while calling the woman's name. No answer, but just when his eyes were used to the dark hut, he suddenly saw something moving from the corner of them. It was the woman they'd been looking for, the woman from the label, but she looked very different than Tim and Bob had imagined. Grubby, skinny, and pale, she looked at the man asking, What do you want from me? It was also clear from her voice the poor woman had fallen on hard times. We found your pram in the canal and wondered how it could have ended up there, Tim said quietly. Without saying a word, the woman stood up and walked out, past the men. Once outside, she turned around. If you really want to know, I'll tell you, but not here. With the two men at her heels, the poor woman walked towards the moat. Here she sat down on a bench and told the men to sit next to her. Are you ready for this story? The two dredgers nodded and looked at the woman with big eyes. She took a sip of the coffee the workers brought for her. She closed her eyes and took a deep breath, and then the incredible story of the pram finally surfaced. Over ten years ago, the woman Sophia was told she was pregnant. Overcome with joy, she had immediately bought all kinds of things for her baby. This is what she'd always wanted, it was a dream come true. Blissfully happy, she was already practicing motherhood. She regularly walked along the canals with the pram, imagining that her baby was already there. But then, fate struck, she miscarried. This event hit her hard and she never wanted to see the baby carriage again after this, and had it thrown into the canal where it was never to be seen again. Because of the grief she went through after her miscarriage, Sophia lost everything. Her job, her house, her friends, she was forced to live on the streets. After years of this sad existence, she didn't know any other way. She had resigned herself to her fate. This sad story touched the two dredgers so deeply that they decided to do something very special for the poor woman. They both donated their entire month's salary to the woman to help her get back on her feet. They took her to the hairdressers, bought her new clothes, and even paid the rent for a small apartment in the city. Here she could live at their expense until she could stand on her own two feet. Grateful for this great act of charity, Sophia decided not to waste the opportunity she'd been given. Cleaned up, she applied for several vacancies and was soon hired as a secretary at a local company in the city where she lived. This was a first step in the right direction, but the biggest step was yet to come for her. Bit by bit, she started to care for herself and for life again, and it showed. She got back her natural glow. Although Sophia would be eternally grateful to the dredgers, the contact watered down somewhat, but she knew she could always turn to them if she ever needed their help. The months turned into years and Tim and Bob heard nothing more of Sophia, until one day a very special letter fell on both of their doormats. It was from Sophia. She thanked the couple from the bottom of her heart for what they had done for her years ago. She also told them about her life, where she was now. She worked for a company where she had made some good friends and she had met a very special man. She had married him and, as unbelievable as it sounds, she even had a baby with him. Fondly, she shared the family pictures with the two dredgers, and that wasn't all. Sophia invited the men to come and meet her husband and son. Once there, she asked the two men if they wanted to be godfathers to her baby. Tim and Bob felt honored and eagerly accepted the offer. Sophia's child is now growing up healthy and happy, and one thing can be absolutely sure of. He has the best godfathers in the world.